So during the 1980s, my approach to still life was characterized by um, an interest in depicting ordinary objects um, or, or objects of day-to-day -day life. And so what, two of the object categories that I developed at that period have stayed with me for my whole painting life. And, and those uh, categories are shoes and clothing. And basically I used two compositional structures. One was either the grid, lining the objects up, or a random scatter. And in this exhibition here, those two structural approaches for the composition are still at play. So you have a grid here, and you have a more of a, of a, of a random scatter with the, with the bathing suits in, in the painting dip here. So I also worked in series, so I did huge numbers of paintings of the same objects. Every time that you, you paint, say, the shoe, you have it, but when you finish it, you've lost it. And so there's something again about, about loss and, um, and getting it back somehow. In uh, Catherine's will, so you are repeating some motifs like that, for instance, uh, the robes, and we, we can find also a pair of shoes uh, at the end and a kind of repetition. In fact, that shoe there comes from my time at art school. That pair of shoes in painting has followed me all through my life, but it's allowed me to explore many, many questions um, about um, identity, um, um, change, what you keep with you through life, what you discard, how something can become meaningful in many different kind of contexts. And so this shoe here then gave rise to this painting. I mean, the original shoe sort of catalyzed all the shoe paintings, if you like. So even though I'm painting many, many different kinds of shoes, I feel that I'm still just painting that, that pair that I first began with. So when you, we find a single black shoe like this one, it's a kind of symbol of you. So the, the shoe in, in this instance here, there's, um, in fact, it's the same mannequin that, was, that is involved in the paintings that you have in the frac of mm -hmm. the mirror and the tablecloth. And they're part of, a, of an ongoing series of paintings that I developed thinking about how to um, represent the body or the, the, the human form. I find it re really impossible to paint people. I just cannot do it. And I have to keep on finding ways of tricking myself into f painting people. So I can, I can paint people through a representation of them or by turning um, the person into a kind of an object, if you like. And so the mannequins for me were a way to kind of create um, a human, um, a representation of a human presence through, um, through the lens of still life. Let's come back to fabrics and uh, this motif of towels in a way that could be uh, hanging on different uh, elements. Uh, they're, but they're also monochromes. Well, I think there's an ambiguity as to what they are. Are they paper or are they fabric? Or are they just areas of paint? So in my own mind, I, I really don't know what they are. But they speak to all of those possibilities. And I like the way that the, the painting um, can, not, can not be tied down definitively like that, that it operates on this level of association of, of, of an image holding many, many things at the same time, but also uncertainty about just what it is that one's looking at. Another object that was in uh, black and white and that is also in uh, Catherine's will is a mirror. Yes. How this mirror was important for you? Originally, um, I had painted a garment here. You can still see a trace of the dress in the mirror. And some objects really fascinate me, how they can be endlessly engaged with, and yet they never leave um, the trace of, of touch. And so, um, so the mirror was necessary to involve where the viewer was here as if they could see themselves in it. But what then began to happen was the painting of this central thing here. This was another um, very, very new thing to think about with painting because it relates a little bit to 
um, that section of the of the dress and the trousers and um, and jacket, in that I wanted something to kind of represent the imagination or something or or energy or a source in me that kind of stirs me to paint or something unknown in me, something that is both known and unknown. All sorts of things caught up um, to do with with um, leading to the love of paint, if you see what I mean. This as well went through many phases. It was very colorful at one point, as if I was taking all the colors from the palette over there and they had been embedded here and it was going to be a force. When I realized that um, what was really, really driving this whole section here was space. I needed to suppress everything that was very surface oriented. So the color went and that's where the black really sort of became, became um, powerful in my mind as something where I could, I could paint um, space. This thing then needed to be very separate in terms of everything else and the shininess became really important. Um, and then when it emerged, I could begin to see myself um, in the, you know, in the reflection. And that became very exciting to me because it was more of a mirror than the mirror physically in that way. The question of how the viewer engages with art really fascinates me. How the viewer, um, to any artwork, how they open up to it. Um, is really such a wonderful and interesting question to me.